evening and welcome. This is Primetime News on TV1. Bringing you the news, I'm Miyuki Parshia. Before we head into stories in detail, let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. Heavy rains batter multiple parts of Sri Lanka and flood warnings issued for Ratnapura. 13 SLPP MPs led by GL Piris cross over to the opposition. Sri Lanka IMF reach preliminary agreement for emergency loan. Food inflation in Sri Lanka hits over 93 percent. 28 IUSF protesters arrested for protesting released on bail. Human Rights Commission wants investigation committee on May 9th violence. Motorcycle gunmen open fire near Nigambo court. Starting off with the top story tonight, the Med Department says very heavy showers exceeding 150 millimeters could be expected in the western, southern, Sabaragamo, central and Uva provinces as there is a low level atmospheric disturbance in the vicinity of Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, the Irrigation Department has also issued a flood warning to several divisional secretariats in the Ratnapura district. Level 3 evacuation warnings were issued to several localities in Kaluthara and Ratnapura this evening by the National Building Research Organization. Level 3 red landslide warning has been issued for the Palindanura Divisional Secretariat in Kaluthara. Level 3 red landslide warning has also been issued for the Ratnapura, Kuruvita and Alapatha areas in the Ratnapura district. Heavy showers were experienced in many parts of the island throughout Wednesday. In the 24 hours that ended at 6.30 a.m. on Wednesday, the highest rainfall in the island was reported from Gaul Yakkalmulla and it was recorded at 195 millimetres. According to the Department of Meteorology, Pusa received 148 millimetres of rain and the reading in Kaluthara was 122 millimetres. Our correspondent reported that due to the rise in water levels of the Kukuleganga from the Kuruvita area and the Kalu River from the Ratnapura area, a minor flood situation has occurred. The Department of Irrigation says there is a possibility of floods in low-lying areas of the Kalu River Valley situated in the Palmadulla, Nivitigala, Ratnapura, Kuruvita, Ayagama and Alapatha Divisional Secretariats in the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, five houses were damaged in Bogalagama in Nikavarati on Tuesday night due to heavy rains and winds. Rain was also experienced in Kalamu since Wednesday afternoon. Vehicular movement in the Braybrook Place was hampered after a tree uprooted due to gale winds. Heavy showers exceeding 150 millimeters can be expected in the western, southern, Sabaragamu, central and Uva provinces. In analyzing the data we have, showers can be expected in certain parts of the island on Wednesday and Thursday. Meanwhile, a landslide warning was also issued today. Level 1 landslide warnings have been issued in Bulat Singhala Divisional Secretariat of the Matra District, Ududumbura Divisional Secretariat in the Kani District, Amagamo Korale Divisional Secretariat of the Matale District, and Ayagama Divisional Secretariat of the Ratnapura District. However, with the predictions made by the Met Department on the continuation of these showery conditions, there is a possibility of these warnings being changed. Thirteen legislators representing the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumur, led by Professor G. L. Piris and Dallas Alha Perumur, officially crossed over to the opposition today. Today our country is facing a crisis and we have faced a similar crisis before. We experienced a 30-year-long war, the tsunami and the COVID-19 pandemic. All those instances, we had a parliament that represented the proper mandate of the people. Unfortunately, today we do not have that strength. There is a clear disparity on what the people want and what is represented in the parliament. The parliament was elected in August of 2020. We did not tell the people to give us a mandate permitting us to whatever we want in parliament. As the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumana, we produced a program to the people. It received a massive response and the mandate was turned on its head. What we said back then is the 
the complete opposite of what we are doing now. Speaker, this parliament stands on one concept, which is the social contract. The social contract is the lifeline of democracy. If the social contract is eroding or is destroyed, the democratic way of life cannot be revived. The next important thing for a democratic society is an election. People need to have the right to elect a parliament they want. We must award that right to the people. I request the government not to repeat what they did with the local government election when it comes to the parliamentary election. As the chairman of the SLPP, with the consent of Mahindraj Paksa, I went to court on the matter and the court said the elections need to take place. But through various means, it was not held. We have decided to move to the opposition as an independent group from the Sri Lanka Pothu Janna Perumana starting today. Thereafter, SLPP Chairman Professor G.L. Piris, SLPP Treasurer Dala Salaha Peruma, Attorney at Law Dilan Pereira, Dr. Nalaka Godeva, Professor Charita Herat, Professor Channa Jayasumana, KPS Kumarasiri, Dr. Gunapala Ratnasekara, Attorney at Law Udayana Kirindikoda, Attorney at Law Vasanthayapa, Dr. Upul Galapati, Dr. Tilak Rajapaksa, and Lalit Ellavala crossed over to the opposition. Opposition leader Sajit Premadasa extended a warm welcome to the MPs who crossed over to the opposition. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa in a tweet said, quote, The SJB warmly welcomes the chairman of the Sri Lanka Pothujana Perumana, Professor G.L. Piris, and the team to the opposition. End quote. The opposition leader added, quote, This will strengthen our resolve in our fight against an anti-democratic government. End quote. आपे पारण मित्रयं की पदने यहाँ पे ते हाट में हाट एविदिनो निसा में यहाँ पे ते ते हाट में हाट एविदे एविदे हीटी अलुद्याक ने में प्रजातंत्रवादी This is not something new. I have been in this parliament for 30 years now, and this is normal in a democratic system of governance. I have seen parliamentarians crossing over in this parliament, but in order to carry out our work in a democratic system of governance, as a government, we will implement and carry out the policies we presented. I saw how the opposition leader warmly welcomed Professor G. L. Pires to their side. Dr. Harsha De Silva told the parliament that this crisis is a result of several mistakes we made as a nation throughout history. Even Professor G. L. Pires had presented several budget proposals to this parliament when he was working in the capacity of the finance minister. You all accepted his proposals back then. It's good. I am not saying that there was anything wrong in that. Two proposals that were brought to Geneva were also defeated when he was the foreign minister. And today, you all warmly welcomed him. Now, how did the Sri Lanka Polijana Perimena respond to this morning's crossover in Parliament? Let's have a listen to those comments. The Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna convened a media briefing in Colombo today to respond on its chairman leading several MPs to the opposition. I cannot understand why Professor G. L. Piris got involved in this. That's not the issue. A majority of the crossover are nationalist MPs. Sri MP Udegama Pilla told reporters today that the group of independent parties hope to enter into talks with the SLPP MPs led by Professor Gia Piris, who decided to sit with the opposition in Parliament. The only issue we had to engage in talks with them was that they were members of the ruling faction. Today they announced their position to become independent. We can now engage in talks with them. Parliament 
කිසිම කොන්දේසියක් නැහැ අපි සාකච්ඡා කරනවා අපි මේ වෙන වැඩ පිළිවෙලක් හදලා තියෙනවා ඒ වැඩ පිළිවෙල පදනම් කරගෙන අපිට සාකච්ඡා කරලා පොදු වෙන් කතාවකට පත් වෙන්න පුළුවන්. ඒකද අමුතුමාරගේ පට්ටිය වැඩි වෙනවනේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ එකක් වෙයි. හොඳයි නේද? හොඳයි නේද? එතකොට වස්දේව නායකාර අනුමත උතුමන් දෙයක් සිංගලින් කියනවනේ ලියන්න තියෙන මල්ල ඔබා බලුණු කුමෙටයි කියලා. තාම ඉලක්කම හරියටම වැඩි වුණේ නැහැනේ. වැඩි වෙච්ච දැට අපි කතා කරමු. Taking a look at a headline making story tonight Reuters reported that Sri Lanka and the International Monetary Fund have reached a preliminary staff level agreement on an emergency loan to the crisis hit country and a formal announcement is likely tomorrow Reuters reported on this development by citing four sources with the direct knowledge of the matter Sri Lanka is struggling with its worst economic crisis in more than 7 decades and had sought up to 3 billion dollars from the IMF. The International Monetary Fund told News First that the IMF mission in Colombo has been extended by one day because discussions are still ongoing with the authorities. Peter Burr, the senior mission chief for Sri Lanka and Masahiro Nozaki, the mission chief for Sri Lanka, made this announcement in response to media queries. The IMF mission in Colombo is set to conclude tomorrow. The debate on the budget amendment presented yesterday commenced in parliament today. Parliamentarian of the Samagi Janabala Vegya Dr. Harsha De Silva commenced the debate. According to data, food inflation for last month was a staggering 80%. Analyze what happened between 2021 August to 2022 August. If someone saved 100,000 rupees during this period, the real value of it is 30,000 rupees now. It was made to fall. I am not wrong if I state the Rajapaksas have stolen 70% of the people's overall savings. We are against the wall at present. The Aragalaya came into being because our people could not suffer any more. Honorable Speaker, the SLPP and the Rajapaksas got together and destroyed this country. The people are not afraid to admit it. The Rajapaksa gang and the SLPP got Ranil Vikramasinghe to come into power. But this is a distortion. Will the SLPP, the Rajapaksas and Basil's faction allow the trajectory of this country to change? They might agree to minor changes to fulfill their political interests and to delay elections. Ranil Vikramasinghe has no mandate. He is a president who is a prisoner of the SLPP. Will the SLPP allow their prisoner to initiate an economic plan which is drastically different to theirs whether we like it or not we can only assume that ranil vikramasinghe's efforts will be in vain enisa mata nan hitenne api kemati unat nati unat ranil vikramasinghe janadipatumage mewara utsahaya wature ai kiyala thamai apita hitenne ranil vikramasinghe ge aarthika pratipattiya tha kuduwe hadapu koha patiyek wage kiyala thamai mata nan denenne garu janadipatu katha nayaka dumane Regardless of how attractive these proposals are, he does not have a foundation to bring them to fruition. We need to work towards ensuring a government with a mandate is established as soon as possible. What nirmane karagana? E avashya kati utu sampadane karagati utu. Apy acharya Harshida Silva, Madhu Tuma. Harshida Silva wants to help, but is afraid to do so. He admits this policy is progressive, but he has reservations on whether it can be implemented. Do not think negatively. He is the only one in this parliament who took up this responsibility. I tried to convince your party leader for 3 hours to take up the position of prime minister. He refused it. Ranil Vikramasinghe is the only person who made the sacrifice. Andu yage mati kama bara ganda. Etuma pratikshepa kara me duskara avasthavedi mekata bella denna taapu ekama nayakya wena kavuruth ne me Ranil Vikramasinghe mattuma. Puro kathane karapu raje wiyadama. The expenditure of the government increased more than expected while revenue fell. How can we bridge this gap? These proposals were presented to address that. These books have all the answers to the issues in this budget. This is economics by Lipsy and Crystal. The other is making public enterprises industry leaders, the role of governance and legislative control. This was the book compiled based on my PhD research. Nibandane padanam karagena liyapu bota. Meka parishil ne karana, meke tinoa. You represented this government, but at a certain point of time, your ministerial portfolio was removed. Therefore, you went to the Delkanda market, heard the woes of the people, and took up another position. Now the price of goods are higher. Do you not visit the market now? 
there are no proposals here to address the issues of the people. I made a speech suitable to be made at the market. When someone told me green chilies was 1,000 rupees, I admitted the price was high and that had come about because of the organic fertilizer policy. I said it then and I will say it now. Everyone believed the man with seven brains had all the answers. I have been saying for the longest time that P.B. Jayasundara is an economic assassin. He was made the president's secretary. CBSL officials sent reports on how dire the situation is, but PB hid those, leading the president to believe the situation is not worsening. That president's biggest weakness was allowing PB to make decisions regarding the economy. Where is he now? This crisis could have been forecast. Do not think it is easing. We are still at the start of it. Industries are closing down. Businesses are being forced to shut down. None of you are speaking about what sort of fate will befall the country when this worsens. What is the answer then? We need to come together as one nation to defeat the enemy. We can't expect togetherness on a societal level when we cannot even band together here in parliament. It takes two years to allocate 650 million to write off farmers' loans, saying it would be a stain on the treasury. However, we have heard that 400 million is to be given to repair Mahindra Rajapaksa's residence. Not even 4 rupees, let alone 400 million has been allocated to maintain Mahindra Rajapaksa's home. But we have a duty to look after former presidents and their families. A program to expand the scope of the Sri Lanka Pulujana Perimana commenced under the patronage of the party leader, former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. The party's district political authority and affiliated organizations, district heads, participated in a meeting today which took place at the party head office and this meeting was chaired by former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. Former Minister Nama Rajapaksa also participated in this discussion. Moving on, motorcycle gunmen struck again this afternoon and this time they also injured a passerby. Crime Watch has the details. Crime Watch. A motorcycle gunman opened fire at a man travelling in a car close to Nigambo Court on Wednesday afternoon. Sri Lanka police said that the 40-year-old driver of the car, identified as Suresh Pushpakumara from Katuella Gamakatana, was injured in the shooting. Police said that the motorcycle gunman had targeted the driver and used a pistol to carry out the shooting. In addition, police said that the injured man is one who was remanded for a drug case and was recently released on bail. He was targeted by the gunman when he was visiting the Nigambo High Court to appear in a case related to drug peddling. Sri Lanka police said another 51-year-old motorcyclist was also injured in the shooting and he suffered gunshot injuries to his ankle. Both injured men are being treated at the same hospital. Investigations have revealed the license plate of the motorcycle used for the crime. However, police are conducting further investigations to determine if the plates are fake. On the 27th of July 2022, a criminal gangster known as Paspunda, wanted for multiple crimes, was brutally gunned down near the Gampaha court. On the 4th of August, a gunman opened fire inside the Mount Lavinia Magistrates Court and the target of that shooting was a man who was accused of credit card fraud. Crime Watch. A 28-year-old man was gunned down by an unknown gunman opposite the Balapitiya Hospital in Ambalangoda this evening. Sri Lanka police said the victim was a resident of Vatugedara and he was gunned down when travelling on his motorcycle. Sri Lanka police believe a 256 assault rifle was used to commit the murder and suspect the shooting may be the result of an ongoing dispute between criminal gangs linked to drugs. However, police said it is investigating leads to determine if this shooting has any link to the previous incidents of men being gunned down in Ambalangoda in recent days.
The Department of Census and Statistics says that the overall rate of inflation as measured by CCPI on year-on-year -year basis in August is 64.3%. According to the department, the overall rate of inflation is 64.3% in August 2022 and the CCPI inflation on an year-on-year -year basis which was calculated for the month of July 2022 was 60.8%. The year-on-year -year inflation of the food group increased to 93.7% in August 2022 from 90.9% in July 2022 and the year-on-year -year inflation of the non-food group increased to 50.2% in August 2022 from 46.5% in July 2022. 2022. The month-on-month -month change was contributed by increases of food items by 0.83% and non-food items by 1.62% respectively. The Fort Magistrates Court today granted bail to two more Aragalia activists who were produced in court with regard to unlawfully entering the President's office on the 13th of July and convening a media briefing. Sanka Jaya Sekara and Chamal Akalanka were released on personal bails of 500,000 rupees each. Aragalia activists, Venerable Koswata Mahanamatero, Reverend Father Jeevanta Piris, and the General Secretary of the Ceylon Teachers Union were earlier released on bail for unlawfully entering the President's office on the 13th of July and convening a media briefing were present in court once again today. The Colombo North Crimes Investigation Unit informed the court that the investigations into the incident are yet to conclude. The Ford Magistrate ordered Sri Lanka Police to produce a progress report on the investigations on the 14th of September. The Ranil Vikramasinghe and Rajapaksa Yunta is trying to suppress the issues of the people. Their so-called democracy is being exposed. Suppression will never solve the hunger of the people. Come tomorrow or the day after, the price of a loaf of bread will rise to 250 rupees. Farmers and labourers have been rendered helpless. The Ranil Rajapaksa Junta is creating a disaster. We will continue our struggle peacefully. Ranil Vikramasinghe's main issue is this Aragalaya. He is aware that he will meet the same fate of Gotabe Rajapaksa. Ranil Vikramasinghe is somewhat teasing the people. It won't take long for things to boil over. He will have to follow the path of Gotabe Rajapaksa. In 1848, the Governor Lord Torrington imposed a body tax on the people of Sri Lanka. Rana Vikramasinghe wants to open tax files for all those over the age of 18. What we are passing today is the most brutal era of this country. Moving on, Human Rights Watch says Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe should immediately end the use of draconian counter-terrorism laws to target peaceful protesters and release those in custody. Human Rights Watch said that since he was sworn in as President on the 21st of July, following the flight and resignation of then-President Gotapi Rajapaksa, President Vikramasinghe has suppressed rights including the freedoms of expression, association and peaceful assembly. It added that Vikramasinghe's administration imposed a one-month state of emergency, used security forces to violently disperse protesters and arrest dozens of people who participated in peaceful protests. Successive governments have broken promises to suspend use of PTA and replace it with rights respecting legislation. The Sri Lankan government is currently negotiating with the IMF to secure a multi-billion dollar bailout and is in talks with international creditors to restructure the country's foreign debt. Human Rights Watch said Vikramasinghe's government should show that it tolerates peaceful dissent if the Sri Lankan people are to have any chance of holding it accountable for how new international loans are spent. Meenakshi Ganguly, South Asia Director at Human Rights Watch, said, quote, President Vikramasinghe seems intent on disregarding calls by Sri Lankans for political reform and accountability and those by his allies abroad to improve respect for human rights. While people inside the country suffer repression and economic hardship, Sri Lanka's international partners need to make sure that Vikramasinghe can't ignore their message, end quote. 28 people who were arrested during yesterday's protest in Colombo were released on bail. 
28 suspects who were arrested during the IUSF protest on Tuesday were released on personal bail on Wednesday after they were produced to the Maliga Kanda Magistrate's Court. Maliga Kanda Magistrate Tanuja Jayatunga granted bail after considering the requests made by President's Council M.A. Sumandiran, President's Council Sali Piris and several other counsel who appeared for the suspects. The case is scheduled to be taken back up on the 23rd of next month. Before the suspects were brought to the court, they were examined by the judicial medical officer. We show the magistrate that every citizen has a right to protest. It's actually a civic duty. We have a civic duty to protest and direct a government in the right path whenever they do something wrong. We presented several legal precedents that were followed even by the Supreme Court for the past 30 years. Therefore, you cannot arrest someone for protesting against the government or for hooting at the police. We even showed several photographs as evidence to prove that it was not the protesters who obstructed the road, but the police who were the ones who obstructed. It. The Inter-University Student Union lodged a complaint at the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka with regard to yesterday's incidents including the arrest of 28 members. When they don't provide the people of this country the needed food, gas, medicine and letting the education of our children go to waste, we cannot just sit and watch at home. We are forced to take to the streets. The people who were sitting on the road without even a stone or a stick were targeted with tear gas and water cannons. They chased them away and beat them with batons. That's how the Rajpax has operated. Meanwhile, the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka says that it wants the entire law enforcement system investigated. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka has recommended that the President appoints a committee to identify perpetrators within law enforcement who are responsible for the breach of the law that led to the violence on the 9th of May 2022. HRCSL in a statement on its findings relating to the investigation of the violence that broke out on the 9th of May 2022 opposite temple trees and golf is said that it was revealed that the police could not accurately ascertain the speeches of the parliamentarians and the other state and non-state officials made inside the temple trees on that day. HRCSL said the failure in not obtaining this crucial information is attributed to the intelligence unit under the Secretary of Defence, which is the state intelligence unit. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka said that the leadership of the police, IGP and the senior officers must have a system that constantly analyzes all incoming information and that Sri Lanka police could have a system of obtaining all information relevant to prepare the officers for every possible attack. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka advised examining the telephone conversations between the IGP to his subordinates and from the subordinates to the IGP and the telephone conversation between the IGP and the Secretary of Defence from 11.50 to 1 p.m. on the 9th of May 2022 and the complete phone messages must be obtained from the TRCSL. The HRCSL also recommended that the state adequately compensate the victims who had suffered injuries due to this breach of duty of the law enforcement officials. It also recommended that the president may direct the committee that is to be appointed to investigate the entire system of law enforcement and identify the responsibility and take necessary measures to deal with such officers punitively. Opposition leader Sajid Premadas raised concerns in Parliament of the attacks on student protests. Prime Minister, yesterday, student leaders of the Inter-University Student Federation held a protest march in Colombo. As citizens, it is one of their fundamental political rights, but they were attacked brutally using tear gas. I would like to ask the Prime Minister whether the people cannot exercise their fundamental rights now. They have arrested 25 students without any reason. They express their political opinion. Is it illegal to hold protests? This is a dangerous situation. While carrying out acts of state brutality and state terrorism, they want us to join hands with them to form an all-party government. How can they do that? Will they detain those 25 students who were arrested yesterday under the PTA? Will they issue detention orders to detain them for 90 days? We need an answer. The police stormed into a media briefing that took place at the Center for Society and Religion in search of a person called Lahiru. I would like to ask the ruling faction whether these types of acts can be justified under a democratic framework. <laughs> 
అలిపిన బతికేలా మమ్మ ఆండు పక్షం గాను మీరటి ఆండు క్రమ వ్యవస్థావ పరిధి ఆ గవర్నమెంట్ ఇస్ ఫాలోయింగ్ అ పాత్ దట్ ఎన్షూర్స్ ద ఫండమెంటల్ అండ్ డెమోక్రటిక్ రైట్స్ ఇన్షైన్డ్ ఇన్ ద కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ కంట్రీ ఆర్ ప్రొటెక్టెడ్ yes the student movement informed the police on a particular protest site but they did not inform the police on where they are going to march afterwards providing information of a protest to police has been the practice so far in this country you cannot enjoy your fundamental rights while violating the rights of another therefore it is our duty to ensure that none of these fundamental rights are violated we have been informed thus far that none of those who were arrested yesterday will be charged under pta It's the duty of the police to consider both fundamental rights and the obstructions caused to the public. We all expect these institutes to maintain law and order in the country. Therefore I think there's no need for us to panic. Prashna yahan pe ek honda hai. Meanwhile president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka Presidents Council Salia Peri said that the Prevention of Terrorism Act has been misused in the past. President of the Bar Association President's Council Salia Peris commented on the Prevention of Terrorism Act during an expertise discussion held at the Open University on Wednesday. PTA ka thula the Prevention of Terrorism Act has failed to interpret the term terrorism. It has failed to mention that these wrongdoers can only be charged under this act only if they do those acts within a terrorism framework this act has been misused throughout history we even provided then minister gl peris on several recommendations on this topic actually it was the foreign ministry which requested us to send these recommendations we made a recommendation to reduce the detention period because in some countries they can only detain for 21 days we recommend them to adjust the law in a way that these suspects detained under this act to be present to court after 3 months We also recommended to define and interpret the scope of terrorism in this act and to limit this act for only terrorist activities. If not, there's a risk of it being misused in acts of dissent. We have seen in the past how the police spokesperson justified some action once it happens, but none of these justifications match with the charge on the sheet when the police present these suspects to court. Under these circumstances, I believe that major changes and amendments should be made to the PTA. Mama hita noa me me trustwadi vela kui me panate vishala sanshodena venno ne kiya. The Asian Development Bank has approved a 200 million dollar emergency assistance loan for Sri Lanka. The Asian Development Bank approved a 200 million dollar emergency assistance loan for Sri Lanka with funds repurposed from other ongoing ADB projects to improve food security and protect the livelihoods of the poor and vulnerable especially women and children. ADB senior education specialist for South Asia Asako Mariyama said that food security has severely affected the people of Sri Lanka amid the current economic difficulties and this assistance will expand direct financial support for the poor and vulnerable boost livelihood development activities and agricultural production as well as enhancing social protection systems in addition the adb will administer a 3 million dollar grant from the japan fund for prosperous and resilient asia and the pacific to support basic needs such as food hygiene kits and medicine of vulnerable women children elders and persons with disabilities in shelters and care homes and those at risk of being placed in institutional care Moving on Sri Lankan High Commissioner Milind Morugoda has said India is the anchor of regional security and that Colombo and New Delhi needs to develop a framework to deal with issues such as a Chinese research vessel's recent visit to Hambantota Acknowledging India's effort to help Sri Lanka cope with its worst economic crisis Morugoda said in an interview according to the Hindustan Times that New Delhi will continue to play a crucial role in aiding the island nation's recovery including investments and assistance with bridging finance till Colombo finalizes a bailout package with the International Monetary Fund The National Transgender Network Trust in Sri Lanka along with the support of other transgender organizations held a media briefing on Sri Lanka's first draft transgender rights protection bill in Colombo yesterday. The draft proposal bill will be presented to supporting MPs of the parliament and the Human Rights Commission. The real argaleo will begin after this discussion. We will have to take the next step of submitting this motion to Parliament because laws are passed in Parliament. 
we have to play the next step on how we are going to go there. People may wonder if this is the need of the hour. Actually, it is, because it is our right to be free in society, to be loved without conditions. This bill is what opens the door to that possibility. This bill will add value to our lives. What actions can we take against the injustice we face? How can we do that? This will even ensure our right to education. I believe you all are here to add value to people's lives. I think Manghitano, Minisunga Jeevitavalta, Aloka, Gaina, Tamai, Atrama, Dogologanga, Daikatame, Labadin. The American Chamber of Commerce in Sri Lanka held its AmChamps Founder Showcase 2022 in Colombo yesterday. The event was held to identify, encourage and provide enterprising young entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka with seed funding for their entrepreneurial ideas. This platform is not just created to find um, funding, but it's also to support uh, through the mentorship and coaching and supporting with the businesses, business plans of the youth of today. The competition saw eight selected finalists present and showcase their entrepreneurial ideas and business plan to a panel of distinguished judges. Deputy Chief of Mission of the U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka, Douglas E. Sonic, joined the young entrepreneurs in presenting sustainable business ideas at the event. I think that young entrepreneurs can play two roles. The first is that economic growth, bringing your new ideas, your enthusiasm, your energy and your creativity, that innovation to the marketplace. The United States is a tremendously important market for Sri Lankan companies. The second thing that young entrepreneurs are able to do though is to speak with a voice that is important and resonant to government regulators and to the people that are creating our economic environment. The runner-up was Sabasco by Shiran Salgado, which reimagines coconut fiber into a variety of products. The winner was Nilangavira Singha, representing Swaba Tantu, which hand produces paper from Tantu plants, an invasive species of grass in Sri Lanka, and from agricultural waste like banana fiber. The MCHAM Sri Lanka Founder Showcase 2022 is an initiative in collaboration with the Good Market. In some tragic news here at home, a one-month-old infant was found abandoned near a vehicle garage in Bandara Villa today with a letter. A police investigation is underway after a one-month-old infant was found abandoned near a vehicle garage in Bandara Villa on Wednesday. It should be noted the vehicle garage is located close to a child care centre in the Amevale area in Bandaravela. Investigations reveal that this infant was left at the premises at noon on Wednesday. Mechanics who were employed at the garage heard the cry of this infant and informed the police who then had handed over the infant to a child care centre. A woman police officer also volunteered to take care and feed the infant. A letter was also found along with the child. And the letter states the person who left the infant at the garage will return to take the infant in a short while, but until then requested that the child be taken care of. The infant was then hospitalized at the Diyatalava Hospital for examination purposes. Police investigations are underway to locate the suspect who abandoned the child. Sri Lanka police will be celebrating the 156th police day soon and from tonight we bring to you the People's Police, a behind the scenes report on Sri Lanka police preparing to take on the challenges of the modern world. People's Police Almost every single person uses social media daily and engages in online transactions in the modern world. Given that everything is online, the risk of crime taking place online is also high. Cybercrime is the latest challenge faced by Sri Lanka police, given the advancement of technology over the years, challenging the conventional crime-solving tools. To battle online crime, Sri Lanka police established the Computer Crime Investigation Division directly under the supervision of the Criminal Investigations Department. 
me samajamad when we look at the complaints many social media users are amateurs they fall into trouble due to a lack of understanding on ethics and safety photographs are abused and fake accounts are created to cause disconform online trading is a popular tool today and that leads to online financial fraud as well in order to solve cyber crimes the computer crime investigation division maintains direct links with all accepted social media platforms and networks for their crime solving processes the computer crime investigation division of sri lanka police is located in fort colombo but for the benefit of people across the country branches of the computer crime investigation division of the sri lanka police has been set up in mathura kandy and ampara People's pol News First with the People. Sears TV and the Education Minister joined hands to launch a program to create one of the longest paintings in Sri Lanka today. Incidentally, school children from across the island will contribute to this 1,000 feet long work of art. United We Stand is the theme for the longest painting by the Sri Lankan school children that is being created for World Children's Day 2022, which falls on the 1st of October. This work of art is expected to be 1,000 feet long, and the launch of the painting took place at the Independence Square in Colombo. Secretary of the Education Ministry, Nihal Ranasinghe, along with several other officials of the ministry and senior officials of the Capital Maharaja Group, were present for the launch. Two paintings from each of the the 25 districts will be brought together to create one massive painting in Colombo. Painting tools and supplies were officially handed over to the students today to mark the launch of the program. Tomorrow, the paintings from the Jaffna district will be added to the canvas and the official vehicle that will travel across the island was also unveiled. The third phase of the Divisavia program supported by LOLC Holdings in a bid to help the worst affected families due to the economic crisis in the country continued in the Mana district today on its 26th day. Under the Divisavia program, essential goods are being distributed to low-income families facing serious financial difficulties across Sri Lanka. Today's inaugural program was held in Nadun Kandal area in Mana this morning. Essential food packs were distributed to poverty-stricken families in two separate areas of the Mana district today. And that's a wrap of primetime news here on TV1. Take care and good night.